Hello and welcome to the channel. So today what we want to talk about is the file connector and how we can filter out file extensions using trigger conditions. Let's go. So I recently posted a video on the file connector and how the workflow service plan now supports this particular connector. So uh, I've included a, a screenshot here of the video and I'll include a link in the description if you want to go check it out. Uh, I did have a follow-up question uh, after I posted that video about how do I deal with file masks or wildcards. And so while there isn't a built-in filter on the trigger operation that I discussed in that video, we can use trigger conditions that will help us achieve the same result. So that's what we're going to focus on here today. Okay, so if you haven't heard of a trigger condition, let's just review what they are. So a trigger condition allows you to write an expression that, we're f that will filter out any inputs that are not satisfied by that specific expression. So when you have a trigger and then you click on settings, and this I think is available on most triggers, there's going to be some where this won't like say a recurrence for example. But the idea is that you would click on the settings tab, then you would click add, and here you've got a text box. And this text box allows you to go ahead and write a Logic Apps workflow definition language expression. Uh, I will also add that this capability is also available in Power Automate. It's also useful there. I probably have a video on the channel uh, for Power Automate as well. But the idea here is you write an expression that will evaluate to a true or a false um, output or outcome. And when it is true, then that input would actually reach the workflow and you would actually then go ahead and process that input. One thing to note, uh, when you do use this particular text box and you have expressions, you do need to include the at sign. We'll see in the next slide or upcoming slide when I have a compose action, it doesn't contain it. So whenever you're doing, it's more of like the raw expression, always include that at sign at the beginning. All right, so just some tips. Now, when you go ahead and write trigger conditions, I always like to do that in a compose action first. These can be a little bit difficult to debug or troubleshoot when they're actually on the trigger. So go ahead and write what you would want to achieve in a compose, then run the workflow knowing that you're going to include all types of inputs uh, into your trigger. But then what you can then do is see if this evaluates to true or false. And so if you're getting the right result that you expect, then copy this expression into the trigger, into that uh, settings, then the, the text box, and then make sure to include that at sign that I mentioned before. So this will just save you some, some headaches in terms of trying to troubleshoot. And as I mentioned earlier, the trigger condition must resolve to a Boolean value, so true or false. And then obviously what you can do is, um, if you need to do kind of the opposite, like you can also use expressions to sort of inverse that result. So if you're, you know, if you're expecting it to be false, but you need it to be evaluated, then you can flip that around and make that a true as well. Let's go ahead and let me show you a demo of this in action. So I'm in Azure Portal. I'm using the same demo that I did in the previous video. Let's just head over to this designer. And what we're going to have is this when a file is added trigger. Now there is an, another one around like if you want it to deal with if, if it's been updated as well. But I'm just doing if it's been added. Right. So I've got the folder path. Unfortunately, I can't do something like this. Um, which I think is what people would, you know, generally be thinking they could do. Um, but what I do need to do to sort of only process these .sig files is go ahead and write this particular expression here. Now, what is kind of interesting, though, about trigger conditions is that you can now actually include some fairly complex logic if you want here. Like there's, you've got a lot of flexibility from that perspective. So, you know, you could be doing you know, is it a dot .sig, is it a dot .xml, or is it a dot, you know, JSON file, for example. Like, you've got a lot of control here that you may not otherwise see with your traditional file masks. 
Uh, same thing, kind of like that regular expression type of approach. Like you've got whatever you can write in a compose, like in a regular expression, and as long as it resolves to an, uh, a Boolean outcome, true or false, then like that should work here. So you can actually probably get quite creative here if you, if you need to. So yeah, the idea here is I'll have a file. This expression will be evaluated if it resolves to true then the rest of my workflow will actually proceed. These trigger conditions are, are very important when you think about our consumption skew of logic apps, even though I know we're talking about standard here, is especially when you're paying per action of downstream, like you don't want a message to hit your workflow, perform a few steps and then do some sort of filtering. Um, you're going to incur some additional costs. Here, what we're doing is we're basically filtering out at source and uh, it does allow you to avoid you know, these unnecessary actions downstream. So that, that becomes quite important. So the, the purpose of this particular workflow as we talked about is we do want to process dot signal files. Now what I've got here is I've got, I'm in uh, Kudu and I've got a specific file mount that is in place. And here, this is basically that folder that the workflow is going to be looking at. And it's gonna be looking for those .sig files. So the question is, what happens if I go ahead and put some other files in that don't satisfy my condition? Now, these should not get processed. And so what we can do here, if we want to monitor this, is we can go ahead and look, obviously we've got run history. So this represents when a workflow is actually being executed but we can see this trigger history. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna just let this sort of sit here, I'll pause the recording while this runs. And what we should see is that we do have our trigger being evaluated. And what's gonna happen is it's, the trigger's gonna evaluate each of those files to see if it matches our criteria. In the event that it does match our criteria, we will see a workflow run. But for those three files, they don't match our criteria of .sig, so they should not actually run. So, okay, so this is now run. Now you might be asking, okay, why do I see four events here when there's just three of those files? And so what happens here is if we go ahead and click into it and look at our output, what this is is basically the body that includes all of the inputs. And then we did have that split basically uh, command at the, uh, basically at the, the top of that workflow. And so what we do see here is that we now will have one for each of the files. So that first event just represents all of them. And then we've got one for each of the individual files itself. So that explains that. Now let's go to run history. We should not see anything. And it's uh, 420 at 9.59 a.m. rather. And so here you can see that we don't have any files that have run, which is exactly what we would expect in this case. So let's now make sure that we haven't broken anything. So now let's do the happy path and make sure that we can go ahead and put in a .signal file and make sure that it does move. Okay, so using the same uh, workflow from my previous demo. And so what we're gonna do is basically we're gonna pick up a file from this Kent folder and we're just gonna append a .sig and we're gonna put it into that output folder, that hot folder that the other workflow is actually looking for. So let's just head over to overview and we are going to just run this particular workflow. Okay, so that is running. It should just take a couple seconds and it's now successful. And now if we head over to that output folder, we should see that we've got a .sig file. So what this should result in is our workflow going to pick this file up and that workflow executing. So if we head over here, we might have to wait because there is some, okay, it did run. So now it's at 10 o'clock and 56 seconds. So the clock's just turned over. But if we now go ahead and look at this file, we will see that it is the .sig file itself. And here we can also see this was that compose that I used to uh, write that expression. We can see here it evaluates to true. So I do know it is work. And once again, we haven't picked up those other files. This is the only file that is actually on April 20th. Yeah, that, um, hopefully that helps. Like I said, you know, sometimes people would like to have that file mask, but this actually could become even more powerful 
um, by giving you more control over what you want to filter. And at least uh, if you do have needs to filter out certain files, this will at least get you through those hurdles. So thanks for checking out this video. Like and subscribe are always appreciated. We'll catch you later.